This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, so let's go through and revise a topic that we've seen previously on the certificate level. But let's just add little bits and pieces to it to make sure that we bring it up to an examinable standard for F1. It's all about inventories. Uh, IS2 is the accounting standard, if you, if you can't remember. And the key thing that we're trying to account for is the value of inventory at the end of the year. So remember, your closing inventory journal is you debit the inventory on the statement of financial position within your current assets. And then you credit your closing inventory, don't we, as part of cost of sales, because that closing inventory is then next year's opening inventory. So carrying forward the value of inventory that will be then used uh, and sold in, in the following accounting periods, isn't it? Uh, when we're talking about prudence, you know, we, we don't want to value the inventory too high, do we? OK, uh, but if we identify that there is a fall in the value of the inventory, we recognise that fall immediately, don't we? It's therefore then that we value the inventory at the lower of the cost and the net realisable value. So hopefully you can remember that from the glory days of the certificate level. Uh, when you're looking at your NRV, uh, that's your expected selling price. Uh, less your cost to complete, uh, less your cost of selling. OK, so we can look at that on a per unit basis. So what we expect to sell it for, less any cost to complete. So we might need to modify it uh, to be able to get it into a saleable fashion. So maybe your goods have had the packaging damaged and we need to repackage the goods. OK, so maybe that will be then a, a cost to complete the good to get it into a saleable condition. Uh, cost of selling, advertising costs, something along those lines there. Uh, and then deduct that to give you your net realisable value. OK, uh, cost is a little bit uh, like what we've seen previously when we look at the cost of an asset. Uh, here is the cost incurred, bringing the inventory to its present condition. And location. So how have you got the inventory into that position in your shop? in order to be able to go through there and sell it. Uh, so costs that you would include, uh, your materials, so direct materials, is it their direct labour? Because you might need to convert that raw material into a finished good, in which case the labour force are responsible for doing the conversion. Uh, as well as the direct labour, you could have your manufacturing overhead, so production overheads. Do just be careful that uh, they are based on your normal budgeted output. If there are variances within that budgeted output, we don't make any adjustments at this point in time. Uh, what we just go through and do is we look at the average overall expectation, i.e. the normal output, assuming that that will be constant over a period of years. Uh, any transport costs, so shipping costs, road costs, in order to get the goods to their location, we can record that as part of the cost of inventory and also any irrecoverable taxes. So maybe any import duties, border taxes, uh, if the sales tax for some reason is not recoverable and you record that as part of the cost. OK, uh, costs that we go through there and specifically exclude uh, are things there such as abnormal costs. So costs that you were not expecting as part of the production process, they just get expense through profit or loss. Uh, storage costs, uh, your warehousing costs, uh, they would just be expensed because the inventory is in its location already. Uh, we don't record the cost of it being in the location, it's just getting to the location. Uh, we've included manufacturing overheads, but admin overheads uh, are not manufacturing overheads, are they? So they will be excluded. And then any selling expenses they are relevant, but the selling expenses form part of the NRV. OK, so the goods are in their condition. They are in their location, ready to be able to be sold. You need to incur a selling cost, but that will be after the sale. So that is not a cost of getting the inventory to its condition and location. A uh, key bit that you've got is when you value the inventory, you do it on a line by line basis, don't we? So product A, lower of cost and NRV, product B lower of cost in NRV, product C, lower of cost in NRV, and then we go through there, don't we, uh, and total it up, okay, to get the year end inventory, whereby you then debit the inventory on the SFP and credit closing inventory through profit or loss. All a bit too easy, I believe. Okay.
Okay, but there we go. It's a bonus, isn't it, for some F1 exam stuff. Uh, so, an example that we have there, inventory valuation. It says, what figure for closing inventory should be included in the statement of financial position? So, remember, lower of cost and net realisable value on a line-by-line -line basis. So in this instance, I think there's just one inventory valuation. Okay. Uh, so, it says, Neil paid $3 per unit for material. So, that's part of your cost. Uh, and to complete each unit, it incurred $2 per unit in labour. Okay. Uh, it says production overheads for the year based on normal output of 12000 was $72,000. So if we're going to go through that and work out, is it our manufacturing overheads? It is the 72000 divided by 12 which is $6 per unit, isn't it? Okay. And then it says due to industrial action, only 10,000 units were produced. I'm not worried about that in terms of my manufacturing overheads. Okay. We can ignore that fact. We base it upon our normal level of output. Uh, 1,000 units were in inventory at the end of the year. So that's what we're looking to value, isn't it? At the lower of cost and NRV. Uh, as a result of the industrial action, uh, some units were badly stored and became damaged. It's estimated that 200 of them uh, will now be sold for $12 each after minor repairs. Is it of $2 each? So we need to go through there, don't we, and combine them to work out the NRV, don't we? The net realizable value. Key bit there is that of those 1,000 units, 200 of them have suffered damage, okay? The remaining 800 are all okay. So what you've got uh, is if we look at the cost, uh, the cost of the goods that we have, I think is $3 plus $2 plus 6, which is there uh, as $11 per unit, isn't it? Uh, the NRV, if you like, for those goods that were damaged, is the 12 less the 2, which is $10 per unit, isn't it? Uh, however, the, the NRV for your undamaged goods would be $12 per unit, wouldn't it? Because we don't need to, to perform any minor repairs. So the key bit is that for the, the damaged goods, of which there are 800, we will have them at $10 per unit, because that's the lower of the cost of 11 and the NRV. But for the undamaged goods, we will value them there. Is it at $11 per unit? Because that is lower than the NRV for those undamaged goods. So what you've got there is if you split out your answer, you've got, is it the undamaged goods? Is that there as $11 per unit? Multiplied by 800 units and then the damaged goods is your ten dollars per unit of which there are 200 units okay as i just get my calculator i think i can do that one can't i so that's Two thousand dollars is that eight eight hundred? Yeah, eight eight hundred. So that's eight thousand eight hundred dollars. And if I add them together, that gives me there is it ten thousand eight hundred dollars. So key bit is that I valued them separately, haven't I? I valued the damaged goods. 
and the undamaged goods separately. Okay, when I've valued each of them, it's at the lower of cost. So for the undamaged, that was the lower of cost in NRV. Uh, and for the damaged goods, the lower there was the NRV. Okay, so just complicating it up ever so slightly based upon what you had on the certificate level. Okay, there you go. Uh, there isn't much else 